Vibrant, vibrant, vibrant music teaching. Proven and practical tips, strategies, and ideas for music teachers. This is episode 97 of the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. I'm Nicola Canton, and in this show, we're talking about getting unstuck when you feel stressed out. Hey there, beautiful teachers. Welcome back to another episode of the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. It is fantastic to have you here, and I hope that you are not feeling stressed out today as you listen to this. But if you are, or if you know you might be in the future, I want you to save this podcast for using later to help you decompress, because we all need this from time to time. Sometimes we feel stressed or overwhelmed just in general, and we can recognize that in ourselves and be proactive and do something about it. Sometimes, though, we don't recognize what's happening. Everything just starts to feel frantic. Have you ever had that feeling? It's like everything, you're not actually moving that fast, but everything sort of feels like it's going faster than it is, and at the same time it's too slow. It just feels a bit out of control, maybe, well, just not good. And it can be difficult to notice this building up in yourself, so I think it's important to tune in with yourself and know when this is happening. Sometimes it doesn't manifest in that way. Sometimes it doesn't feel frantic. We just feel zapped. We have no energy left. And sometimes we're just having trouble switching modes. Have you ever had this feeling? Many, many teachers do because so many of us work from home. And so it can be difficult to switch off at the end of the day. Like it can be difficult to literally leave work behind, not look at our phones and our emails and any communications from students and that kind of stuff. We've talked about that before, but it can be even more challenging to switch our minds over, to change mode, to think, I am not in work mode right now, I am in family time. Now, I'm not trying to say, listen, don't talk about your students, don't think about your students, but we do need to have a different mode, we find, that means we're not working anymore, because otherwise we're going to burn out. We have to be able to unstick ourselves from a feeling of stress or overwhelm and to decompress and to switch modes so that we can have better health, right? Looking after yourself doesn't just mean exercising enough and eating the right things. It also means having lower levels of stress whenever possible. Doesn't mean never getting stressed, but we shouldn't be up to 90 all the time. Being less stressed and being able to decompress when we do feel anxious or stressed or overwhelmed means that we're better able to serve our students and our customers, their parents. It also means that we're going to be better company for our family and friends. So often we get ourselves into these states because we care so much, right? We're trying to look after all these different types of things. We're trying to be the best teacher and the best mom and the best friend and the best daughter and whatever else you're trying to be. But if you don't look after yourself, if you don't occasionally take five minutes to sort out your mental state, to rebalance, you're not good to any of those people. You're not achieving the success you want to because you're just getting in your own way. So what can we do about it? My goal in this podcast is to give you five options for five-minute decompression exercises. So I wanted to provide different options for different people here. I really don't think you need to do all of these, and certainly some of them you're going to go, oh, that is not for me, for whatever reason, and that's fine. These are all different things that work for different people, and... You know, some of them I use more frequently than others, but there's certainly things that have worked for me at various points in time. So try some of them out. If you're up for it, try something you've never tried before. Or maybe just remind yourself of something you used to do as a routine and you've been neglecting lately. Right, the first one is meditation. And I know what you might be thinking. Ugh, meditation? 
I hate hearing about meditation. Everyone's always going on about mindfulness and meditation these days. Or maybe you're thinking, I already meditate every day and I love it. But there are those of you out there who balk at this, who think, oh my gosh, that's so up in the clouds, silliness, new agey nonsense. Here's the thing. I kind of, I don't quite feel like it's new agey nonsense, but I've always felt like, oh, I don't really want to do that. However, science says that it actually is good for you. Study after study seems to show that people who meditate do have lower levels of stress, in general, have better balance in their lives, and are healthier. So it doesn't have to be this form of meditation that I'm going to suggest first. I would suggest that pretty much all of the suggestions I'm making today are kind of a form of meditation that will help you decompress. So if the literal first option of meditation doesn't appeal to you, don't worry. But This is one exercise which is great to try, and I have done it myself. I'm not a big meditator, but this is simple, it's easy, and you can do it, and it's only five minutes. You hate it, it does nothing for you, you can never do it again, that's fine. Try it out. All you need to do is switch on a timer, so just get out your phone and set a five-minute countdown. Okay, something that will set off an alarm after five minutes. Hopefully a gentle one. And then on this is all you're going to do. Close your eyes, sit wherever you like. Sit on the couch, sit on the floor. I don't care. You don't have to, you know, come into a specific meditation cross-legged pose. Whatever way you want to sit is fine. Sit there, switch on the timer, and then just breathe in for four counts. One, two, three, four. And out for four counts. One, two, three, four. As you do that, if you have crazy thoughts or just normal thoughts that come up, notice what they are. Acknowledge them. Say, hmm, I'm thinking about that now. And then as you breathe out, try to let it go. Whatever it was. If you're thinking about what you're going to make for dinner, try to let that go as you exhale. It's really not about clearing your mind, making your mind blank, becoming a Zen master. It's just about tuning into how you're actually feeling and what you're thinking about and what's on your mind and slowing down your breathing. That's really what we're doing here. And that's valuable. It helps to de-stress you and it's a good routine to get into. So try it out. I'm not saying I do it every day, but I have found it useful from time to time. My next suggestion is basically moving meditation in the form of yoga. Again, you might be thinking, oh, I never want to do yoga. That's not for me. That's not my style at all. That's fine. I do have more suggestions for you after this. Yoga is really my top choice from here, from these suggestions. I do yoga every single day for more than five minutes. However, if you're new to it, I want to suggest you give it a go for five minutes. This can be a great routine to get into, and it doesn't have to be about performing ridiculous poses upside down on your head. It doesn't have to be about being incredibly strong or ridiculously flexible or any of those things. It can be simple, it can be easy, and it can be a useful tool to have in your tool belt. So, my favorite yoga channel on YouTube is Yoga with Adrian. She's one of the biggest channels out there. If you already do yoga, yoga and you hate her, <laughs> and she's not your style at all, feel free to ignore You know, everyone has to find their own personal preference when it comes to yoga. What I like about Adrienne is that she gives different options at different levels and always makes it work for everyone. So it's a good place to start if you've never done yoga before. Although she does talk some general nonsense and talk about her dogs and things. And that doesn't appeal to everyone. I get that. But she does have a great playlist of all under 10 minute practices. Several of them are only five minutes. And we're going to link to that in the show notes. So that's at vibrantmusicteaching.com slash 97. My next suggestion, the third one, the third way to get unstuck in your stressfulness is a circulation booster. So if you're not into all that woo-woo, new age, meditation, yoga, all that stuff, then this might be the one for you. It's just about getting your blood moving, getting your blood pumping around, and 
basically moving it away from all the nonsense thoughts buzzing around your brain. That's a very scientific explanation of that. So here's what I want you to do. Do 20 jumping jacks, then do knocking on heaven's door 20 times. That means stand with your arms by your side and just swing them from side to side so that they kind of slightly hit you (laughs) on either side, right? So you're swinging them around loosely. It's something I have my students do regularly, especially young students at the start of the lesson. So you may have heard me talk about it before. So you're going to do 20 jumping jacks, 20 knocking on heaven's door, meaning swinging side to side, that's one. And then forward fold for 10 seconds. So just lean over towards your toes. You don't have to touch them if you can't reach. You just lean over as if you're reaching towards your toes and completely relax for 10 seconds. So 20 jumping jacks, 20 knocking on heaven's door, 10 seconds forward fold, and repeat until your five minutes are up. Simple. The next suggestion might be even simpler. Dance. Have a dance break. Remember that you actually like music and perhaps like dancing and moving to music. Put on your favorite two songs, I would suggest, for about five minutes. So two songs, queued up, at the ready, nice and loud, and dance about. Pretend you're a teenager. It'll be fun. Might help you to shake off the frustration or the stress that's been getting you down. And the last one is music mindfulness. And by that I mean play something. Remember that you actually love playing music. And don't practice. No, no, no. Don't play a bunch of scales. Don't practice that piece you have to play for a performance next week or for a duet with your student. No. Play something. Improvise if that's what will be the most relaxing to you or play your favorite piece from ages ago or something that you can sight read just for fun. As you're playing, notice how the keys feel under your fingers or the strings feel under your fingers and notice the sound. Actually listen. Get as absorbed in it as you can for five minutes. That's it. Okay, so those were my five suggestions. If you have others, I would love to hear them. How do you decompress quickly when you need to get unstuck and unstressed? My five were meditation for five minutes, simply breathing in for four counts and out for four counts with a timer set to five minutes. A five minute yoga practice for a moving meditation. A simple circulation booster of jumping jacks and swinging your arms around like a maniac and forward folding and just repeating to get the blood flowing, shaking it off by dancing for five minutes to two of your favorite songs, and music mindfulness, playing and getting in touch with your instrument again, and really listening and noticing the feel of how you play your instrument. I hope you'll try one of those out this week. The next time you feel a bit stuck, a bit stressed, bit too much in your own head or a bit frantic with your to-do list. I want to remind you before I let you go that we have a webinar coming up on the 20th. So if you're listening to this before that, you can sign up at colorfulkeys.ie slash relevant to come along live. We're going to be talking about how to choose relevant repertoire for your students. So it's going to be a fun one focused on best sources for repertoire and how to know what's going to be right for your student and their level and their interests. Come along, I'd love to see you there, and I'll chat to you here next week. There's still time to book your ticket to the Music Teacher Turbo Boost. This is going to be a two-day seminar with creative and innovative teachers in Dublin in Ireland on August 27th and 28th. So if you can make it over here at the end of August, we would love to see you there. Go to teacherturboboost.com to book your ticket today.